I've got this object lesson, okay? And uh, so I've got this, this jar of, of pasta that we ate last night. And um, I want you to think about God as this jar. You know, God, you know, this jar represents God, all right? Now, I want you to think about within this jar, I want you to think that there are three lights, okay? The first light, second light, third light, and each light represents a person, you know, of the Trinity. So God the Father is the first light, Jesus Christ is the second light, the Holy Spirit is the third light, all right? Now, if I took this to a dark room and... You know, let's say we're reading the, reading the Bible, and every time we read the Bible, when, when Jesus speaks, the second light turns on. Okay? Or if he mentions, if it's about Jesus, the second light's on. Or if it's about the Father, the first light's on. Or if it's about the Holy Spirit, the third light's on. So sometimes one light will be on by itself. Sometimes if the passage, like let's say the baptism of Jesus, you've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all three lights turn on at the same time. You know, because it's all three. So when you think about it like that. So if I took this to a dark room, and we read a passage about Jesus, you know, then we would expect that second light to turn on, right? But the first light and the third light will not be turned on. And the reason for that is because each person is distinct from one another, okay? There's, there's a clear distinction between all of them. But if I took it to a dark room, not only will that second light turn on, but the entire jar will be enlightened. In a dark room, you'd be able to see the entire jar. And the reason for that's important is because not only is Jesus the second person of the Trinity, but he's also fully God. So when Jesus speaks, it is God speaking. All right? It is, it is fully God. It's not just a third of God or anything like that. It's fully God. Or if it's the Father, the, the Holy Spirit, also, if it's just, let's say it's the Father, the first light will turn on, the second light will be off, the third light will be off, but the entire jar will still shine. Okay? Because he's fully God as well. So is the Holy Spirit. And if, if all three lights are on, again, the entire jar will be lit up, but maybe it'll be even brighter. It'll be three times brighter because you see the entirety of the Godhead in that, in that light, okay? So when you think about it like that, okay, th this is a representation of, of, uh, of who God is. But what if, instead of this perspective, so you see the one light here, one light there, one light there, what if I turn the jar and I face it this way? All right? Now let's think about that. Let's say if we had it this way, and that's why you couldn't see the depth, you could just see the, fra the face there. Let's say uh, Jesus speaks, so the second light turns on. What are you going to see here? Do you think from here you'll be able to determine the first light, the second light, or the third light's on? Probably not. But what you will see is the light shining. Okay? Now, that side is not any less God than that. It's, it's, the whole jar represents who God is. Okay? So that is still a correct representation of God. Okay? But regard, it doesn't matter what lights are on. All you're going to see from here is a light. You're not going to be able to see from this perspective, you know, each light as distinct. Now, in saying all of that, the Old Testament is largely like this. Largely like that. Okay? Now, sometimes, like Psalm 2, kiss the sun, lest he be angry. Sometimes you get a flash of that. All right? Like a flash of that. But usually, the majority of the Old Testament, you see God through this lens, through this angle. Okay, now that's not to say we know that even even on this angle, there's still three lights, there's still three distinct lights. It's just that it's it's not as clear. Okay, so sometimes we see God the Son, sometimes we see the Holy Spirit or God the Father, and we, all we see from this perspective from the Old Testament scriptures. If we didn't have the New Testament to enlighten our understanding, you would just see this. Okay, but still, that doesn't diminish the fact that there's still the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right. When Jesus comes onto the scene in the New Testament, he says, well, you've understood God like this. Let me teach you more about God. And he turns it, flips it this way. And that, I mean, Jesus' ministry is just constantly explaining that he was sent by the Father, that the Father has all authority, that he's the Son of the Highest, that he sends the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can't read the New Testament without seeing those three distinct persons. Okay, and once you understand that, then you can go to the Old Testament and you, you know it's more like this, but it's much clearer when the light shines, you have a better understanding. Oh, that's the Father, that's the, that's the Son, that's the Holy Spirit. But sometimes it's still a little bit like that when you go to the Old Testament. That's why when I read Genesis 1 and God says, let us make man in, in our image. You know, all we see really is a light shining there. We see, let us make man. So there's some type of plurality going on there. And I like to think myself, because I had the knowledge of the New Testament and I know God the Father has the authority 
over the Son and over the Holy Ghost, I'd like to think then, even though all we have in that scripture is this one light shining, I'd like to think then, well, because I know the New Testament, that's most likely the Father speaking and issuing that command, issuing that instruction, let us make man. But then we also know because of the New Testament, the creation was done through Jesus Christ. Okay, God, you know, the Father created all things through the Son, 